Hallo und herzlich willkommen! Mein Name ist Nox und wir spielen Baphomets Fluch Teil 1, das Original oder im Englischen Broken Sword, also das gebrochene Schwert. Es ist ein Point-and-Click-Adventure aus dem Jahre 1996, wurde von Revolution Software entwickelt und der Publisher ist Virgin. Und ich glaube, bei diesem Spiel muss ich nichts mehr dazu sagen. Das ist eines der bekanntesten Point-and-Click-Adventures, die es auf der Welt gibt. Und ähm, ja, ich spiele es auf Englisch, das muss ich dazu sagen, weil unsere Charaktere, die wir hier spielen, äh, um die Welt reisen. Und ich finde das immer so ein bisschen blöd, wenn alle dann Deutsch reden. Also Englisch ist die Qual der Wahl und ähm, ich übersetze das Ganze für Leute, die Englisch nicht können und ich würde sagen, wir fangen einfach mal an. Paris in the fall, the last months of the year and the end of the millennium. The city holds many memories for me, of cafes, of music, of love and of death. As I picked myself up, all I could hear was the ceaseless drone of traffic. Life went on around me. But the explosion was to change my life forever. Okay, ich muss mal ganz kurz gucken, ob ich hier die Untertitel ausmachen kann. Jawohl. Ich mag die Musik dezent im Hintergrund. Dann und ja, wir befinden uns in Frankreich mit unserem Georgie Boy hier und ähm, hier wurde ein Attentat begangen und ich denke, ich werde mich jetzt erstmal umschauen. I considered climbing the lamppost, but it wasn't going to shed any light on the affair. It was an iron lamppost. The blast had blown out the glass, leaving a gaping hole. I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken, all right. 
Ja, und George spricht immer ähm, in so einer Vergangenheitsform. Also als wenn er das jemandem erzählt. Ich untersuchte dann das und das und sowas. Ja. The blast had blown out the glass. Mhm. The table had been overturned by the explosion. I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best not to disturb the evidence. Ja, während er hier durch das ganze Ding lief. Ja, ein Clown hat irgendwie hier eine Bombe hochgehen lassen. Ich hätte auch den Directors Cut spielen können, hätten wir ein bisschen was erfahren, warum das hier passiert. Aber ich finde den nicht so gut. Deswegen, ja. The umbrella had protected me from the bomb blast, but it was of no use to me now. I contemplated crawling under the umbrella and pretending none of this had ever happened. <laughs> it was an iron lamp post. Wrapped around the lamp post was a newspaper. The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. That was the only news story. The rest was rumor, gossip and sensationalism. Then I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah ed Din, 1345. Hmm. Wie komme ich? Da komme ich. It was a Paris daily tabloid newspaper full of sex, scandal and sports results. Oh. Es ist sehr lange, dass ich das Spiel gespielt habe, also das ähm, wird eine Weile dauern, denke ich. The table had been overturned by the explosion. Ah, dann denke ich, werde ich mal reingehen hier, oder? The blast had blown out the glass, leaving a gaping hole. It was the body of the old man. It was hard to believe I'd seen him alive only minutes before. Ja, der ist in die Kellnerin reingestolpert. Ich denke mal, das war das Ziel des Ganzen. Der Typ hier. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. Hm. A mysteriously undamaged bottle of spirit stood on the bar. I needed a stiff drink, but I hated the taste of brandy. The pretty young waitress was unconscious. Oh my head, never again. How much vodka did I drink? Oh no, don't tell me. What is your name, Sherry? George Stobart, ma'am. Oh, American. She asked the question quite innocently, but I could sense her reserve. It was something which seemed to afflict all Europeans. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. Da halte ich nicht so viel von. 
You could be in shock. No alcohol. What about the old man? Is he dead? Yes, he is. Ah, oh, mon dieu. Gut, dann ähm, fällt sie jetzt wohl weg als Zeugin. Oh nein, ich habe es verkehrt gemacht. The pretty young waitress was unconscious. Oh fucking. She didn't respond. If I wanted another cappuccino, I'd have to serve myself. <sighs> the sight of the dead guy's staring eyes turned my knees to jelly. Ich glaube, wir hätten halt noch mehr erfahren können, wenn sie... Naja, wenn wir besser mit ihr umgegangen wären, sag ich mal. I contemplated crawling under the umbrella and pretending not Freeze! Hold it right there! Whoa! Don't shoot! I'm innocent! I'm an American! Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand to see the American Consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant Mu. I apologize, Monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe, march. What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur! Stop holding your breath at once! Has it occurred to you that he may be dead, Mou? Oui, monsieur, but I prefer to look on the bright side. No. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Clearly, the killer knew of his presence and... How many times have I warned you about premature extrapolation? All we know is that he is dead. It seemed reasonable to assume... A great detective assumes nothing. Take Maigret, for instance. But, but he was a fictitious character, monsieur. Why, he was no more real than Poirot or Tintin. That's different, Moo. They were comedy Belgians. Anyway, it is unlikely that even you will learn much from talking to the dead. Examine the girl and take her statement, if you can. Et maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Uh, yeah. I guess so. Apart from the bomb blasts. <laughs> Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon, the picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Mu? She'll live. She confirms the American statement. 
A clown with an accordion, no doubt an elaborate and eccentric disguise. Very well. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great advice. <laughs> I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Academic? You are about to witness a scientific breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> The sergeant was a scrawny man in his fifties who resembled a constipated chicken. Excuse me, sergeant. You are the inspector. Go on, monsieur. I was one of the last people to see the victim alive, sergeant. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel I kinda... I owe it to him to find his killer. That is best left to the authorities, monsieur. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No. He just grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, monsieur. Go on and try to forget. Did you find the victim's briefcase yet? No, sir. The inspector gave me specific instructions to guard this door. Until he countermands these orders or backup arrives, here I stay. I really did see the clown. He ran into the alley across the street. Did you follow him? That's your job, not mine. An armed chase through the streets of Paris? That's not our style, monsieur. Inspector Rosso may be unorthodox, but he's not crazy. How did you and Rosso arrive at the scene of the explosion so quickly? You arrived within minutes. Was it a tip-off? Inspector Rosso's sources are a perpetual mystery to me, monsieur. There are some who say he has made a pact with the devil. Mm -hmm. And what do you think? Okay. I think he is the devil. Ooh. What is Rosso doing with that girl? He is giving her the once over, as you Americans say. Huh? Once he gets his teeth into a case, nothing will shake him off. Was he serious about all that psycho detective stuff? Of course. Inspector Rosso is a pioneer and a visionary. His revolutionary methods, once perfected, may change the face of law enforcement forever. I can't see it taking off in L.A. Look, Sergeant, the inspector gave me his card. Yes, monsieur. He wants you to advise him if you have any information concerning this case. Well, I'd be glad to talk with him, but I don't want him working his psycho weirdness on me. Ah. No, monsieur. You are confusing the science of parapsychology with witchcraft. Oh, yeah? What's the difference? We don't do sacrifices. Mm hmm I found this in the street, Sergeant. That, monsieur, is a newspaper, no? There's a note written on it. Salah Edin, 1345. Ah, so the meeting with the clown was planned. How do you make that out? The time of the explosion was between half past one and two o'clock, n'est-ce pas? I guess so. But what about the name? Aha! That stumped you, hasn't it? I have never been stumped, as you put it, in my life, monsieur. It is the name assumed by the clown, no? Salah Eddin the clown? I don't think so. Hmm, they are good. Uh, auf Wiedersehen. See you later, Sergeant.
The girl presented a confident but sullen mask to the world, an expression more suited to the face of a delinquent youth. Excuse me, mademoiselle? Hi, my name's George Stobart. Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yeah, that's right, on holiday in Paris. Some holiday, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with an hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh no, nothing like that. I am Nicole Collard from La Liberté. Well, what's that, some kind of nightclub? Uh, no, it is a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you can interview me. About the bombing. You know, an eyewitness account. Minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. Oh God, it's him again. You speak very good English for a French girl. Thanks. You speak very good English for an American. <laughs> Who's the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Planter. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. How did Plantar get your name? Through the newspaper La Liberté. I'd written an article linking two unsolved murders. One in Italy, the other in Japan. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costumed killer. Plantar said he could supply me with more information. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. Why won't you tell me about this clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. You help me with my story and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay, it's a deal. I have to go develop these pictures. Nein. I'll be on the with you. Fine, I'll uh, see you soon. I wanted to talk about the other things. Na gut. Er hat gesagt, er will dem Ganzen hinterher schnüffeln, dann machen wir das. The drainpipe looked as if it would bear my weight. I took a deep breath and prepared to climb the drainpipe. I guess the clown hadn't escaped over the rooftops. I decided I'd had enough of messing with that drainpipe. The window was protected by stout-looking iron bars. It was a stack of cardboard boxes which had once contained bottles of wine. I examined the boxes closely. They were damp and smelly and decidedly empty. Was ich halt so geil finde im Spiel, das ist halt alles handgezeichnet, ne? Da haben wirklich Zeichner dieses Spiel irgendwie, das ist nicht irgendwie animiert mit PC oder so, das ist wirklich wie bei irgendwie Disney, König der Löwen oder so, haben die das Stück für Stück gezeichnet. Wunderschön, dieses Spiel. It was a battered old trash can. It was a battered old it was a batter. Ah. 
It smelled like someone had dumped a truckload of fish in a locker room on a hot summer afternoon. N nicht gut. The card read Augustin Rosso and gave an address to the south of the Montparnasse Cemetery. Okay. Meine Maus ist schon wieder um, verrückt. It was a plastic crate. Rückspielen. There was nothing of interest. It was an iron cover concealing the entrance to a drain or sewer. I tried to lift the cover with my fingers, but couldn't gain any leverage. Okay, der ist also wahrscheinlich irgendwo in der Kanalisation, aber ich komme hier nicht weiter. Also gehen wir in eine andere Richtung. Ich muss mal ein bisschen die Musik leiser machen. Ich weiß, das mögen einige nicht, aber das ist ja auf meinen Kopfhörern deutlich zu laut. Set into the huge gate was a smaller access door. The door was securely locked. It was a tent made out of plastic sheeting. There was nothing inside the tent except a large toolbox. It was a battered metal toolbox. Hey! Stop that! Get away from there! What do you think you're doing? I was admiring your toolbox. <laughs> Are we? Had a good look, have you? I'm warning you! If you touch it, I'll crack your nut! Uh oh. Okay, I get your point. It was a tent made out of plastic sheeting. It was a huge and weighty looking engineer's telephone. Don't touch that phone! Sorry. The muscular workman wore a morose expression, like a silent warning to leave him to get on with his job. Hey, you! I thought you'd been arrested! No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, gah, I thought that was it. Those automatics by quite a punch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait, silly old coot. Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he says. I could watch it all day. Girl beat. I could have knocked this block off. Ja, also ich mag's auch nicht, wenn Leute mich bei der Arbeit irgendwie beobachten. Ähm, weiß nicht. Ich, also ich persönlich finde, das gehört sich auch nicht. Did you recognize the old man? No. Should I have done? Was he a celebrity? No, but I guess he is now. His name was Plantar. Was? He's dead then? Yeah. That's too bad. Now I wish I hadn't called him what I did. If only I could turn back the clock. If only I'd been more tolerant. Regret and remorse are strange emotions. They really bring out the hammiest actors in people. <laughs> Did you see a clown come by this way? A clown? Like, in a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big red nose. Ho! Huh. Those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. I love the circus, especially the horses. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen a clown? You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us 
have to work for a living. Look, I know you're busy, but surely you'd have noticed a clown. I told you already! I didn't see a thing! He was wearing multicolored baggy trousers and makeup. He'd be a poor sort of clown if he didn't. Listen, I have to find that clown. He's a killer. Say, who are you anyhow? A cop? No, of course not. I mean, do I look like a cop? No, but you act like one. Sticking your nose in where it's not wanted. How do you know this guy's a killer? Did you see him in action? Didn't you hear the explosion? The cafe was blown up. The clown killed the old man? That's right. Blew him up with a bomb concealed in his squeeze box. Merde. But why did he go to the bother of dressing up like a clown? Who can unravel the tangled logic of a killer's mind? I guess it's some deep-seated psychological need. Or just plain showmanship. Take a look at this. You told me you weren't a cop! Don't shout about it. I'm working undercover. Who are you looking for? That's confidential. What's in the toolbox? What's in the toolbox? As if you didn't know. What's the big deal about tools, anyhow? They're cool. Tools are civilization. You don't say. That's right. Tools are what distinguish us from other animals. Who are you calling an animal? I've met your sword before. Looking down your nose at me because I'm working class, huh? I've a good mind to knock your block off. <laughs> what kind of tools do you keep in your box? Huh? You really are interested in tools? Sure, like I said, tools are... Yeah, civilization. So you keep saying. So are you going to show them to me? Am I? Why, you? Aw, oh, come on. Just a little peek. I've got work to do. Find someone else to bother. Do you have a tool for lifting manhole covers? As it happens, I do. Cool. Lend it to me, uh, just for a few minutes. No. Aw, oh, come on! No! Get your own! Let me explain what I'm going to do with your manhole lifting tool. Let me explain what I'm going to do with my peak! <laughs> oh, hey, forget it. I'll come back when you're in a better mood. It doesn't get any better than this. Would you like to read my newspaper? I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd have me on a drip, so I didn't have to stop to eat. Oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining. Bah! Look at this! Damn bleeding out liberals! Cha! Save the dolphins! Catch them and eat them, I say! All that fuss over a bunch of fish! Nah, that's more like it! Look at the size of those! Like champagne bottle corks, no? Ah, what's this? Saladin running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe! It's a racehorse? A horse? A legend! Bucephalus reborn, mon ami! Like a streak of lightning she is! <laughs> Do me a favor, won't you? Keep an eye on my hull. I'm off to put some money on that nag. What about your toolbox? Stuff it. Help yourself. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'd found just what I wanted, a tool for lifting manhole covers. It was a metal rod with a handle at one end and a short cross piece at the other. Ah, that's clear. I can Szenen nicht schneller überbrücken. Was ist doof? Hab ich hier irgendwas vergessen? 
Ich glaube nicht. I lifted the cover to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. Ja, hoffentlich muss ich nicht gegen den Clown kämpfen. It was a shiny red plastic ball sat incongruously on the slippery green slimed floor. Einen Moment. Uh, oh. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. The nose was hollow. Printed on the inside were the words La Rise du Monde, Paris. Mm -hmm. Ein neuer Hinweis. It was a soggy, crumpled paper tissue. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast leftovers. It was the soggy tissue I'd found in the sewers. It was a small scrap of cloth caught on the rusting spike. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. It was the scrap of material I'd found in the sewer. The railing was put there for a simple reason, to stop people getting past. It worked. <laughs> Na, dann ist er wohl oben wieder, oder? Huch. Hallo. Hi there. Hold it right there, you. You sore rat. I knew you'd come back. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? Your trespassing. Come out of there immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. You won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? I was looking for a clown. Huh, ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon dieu! That is awful! And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah! Mon dieu! Then, the man I chased. Do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah! That still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. <laughs> Most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such 
an attraction. <laughs> Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, he doesn't. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Ah, you need some sensible boots. You won't get far in those stupid sneakers. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Well, I, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave, or do I have to call the police? Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Oh, hey, she isn't hurt, is she? No, she's fine. Oh, thank heavens. A poor girl like her isn't safe with the likes of you roaming the streets. Can't you understand? I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. Hm, ah, that's what you say. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type. <laughs> Just like you. <laughs> Take a look at this false nose. I've never seen it before in my life. Do you recognize this material? I am not telling you anything. Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rosso? What does that say? Hominoi Division? A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is your posture, your, your poise. Oh, yes. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. Uh, how can I help you, Inspector? Let's start over from the beginning and tell it just like it was. I would like to know more about his mission. It's interesting. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, Monsieur. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find him. Bravo! Take a look at this false nose. Aha! Uh -huh. That looks like a clown's nose to me. Precisely. He must have dropped it in his panic. Unless he wanted you to find it. Why would he want to do that? To put you off the scent. Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. It's uh, mm, disgusting. What on earth possessed you to show it to me? Someone has emptied their nostrils into it. <laughs> was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why, yes, he was. Clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. <gasps> oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? I don't know. But the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, monsieur. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, monsieur. He grabbed me in an arm lock. His face suddenly next to mine. His grip was like iron. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh no. He made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? So you don't want to hear about my experiences in the desert? I fought to make this country what it is today. I'm sure you did, but I'm a little short of time. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? <laughs> you, you, you can't suspect her, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, sir. I know her quite well, you could say. Uh, she came to work at the cafe oh, uh, six, uh, seven months ago. 
I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. Really? Mm-hmm. So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Oh, mais oui! Who else would I find to cut my toenails? Okay. Now, about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> a pity, because otherwise it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a sou. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary person. Hmm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. What was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74980859. You're kidding. That's his phone number? Yes, that's it. A little trick with numbers that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. <laughs> Do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. <laughs> Take a look at this false nose. You showed me before, monsieur. Okay. I have to be going. Thanks to your help, the citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Vraiment? I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. Uh, I'll let you out. Hope ich auch. Aber coole Geschichten. I hope you find your man, Inspector. So do I. Es tut mir leid. Das ist einfach immer noch sehr laut. So. Ich hoffe jetzt langsam. Saladin Tarik. Hallo? Who is this? Hi. My name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart, I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No, no, that's not possible. Oh, okay, uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Ah, oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. I expect Plantar's a family man, don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. <laughs> he can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight, Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You forgot the puppy. Huh? The faithful puppy dog. Waiting for the sound of his master's voice. Well, maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? I don't know, Plantar. I never heard of Plantar. None of this has anything to do with me. 
What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you be, but sure I am you don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you're saying that to make me think you don't know what I mean, but... Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. Did you know that one of your customers was a part-time clown? If a guy feels happy with a funny nose and custard down his pants, what's the problem? Thanks for nothing, Todrick. <laughs> mm. So, Dean, das kann ich glaube ich nicht anrufen, ja, Nicole. Bonjour, Kula. Oh, hi. It's George Stobart, the American at the cafe. Ah, oh, oui. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come here to my apartment? Fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay. I'll come right over. Okay, dann mal los. Uh, Rougerie. Okay. The shop window featured a display of gowns and women's stuff. The shop window featured a display of gowns and women. It wasn't the style of the clothes in the shop that caught my eye, but the prices. The same amount of money would feed a starving family for the rest of their lives. Oh. I guess people who buy that kind of stuff don't have a problem with their consciences. Ne, die haben so viel Geld, das interessiert die nicht. The door was shabby and in need of a coat of paint. I couldn't imagine the Collard woman living here. I pushed against the door, but it seemed to be locked. Hmm. Dann schaue ich mich erstmal hier um. The vacant shop was sealed with a steel blind. It was a food store selling fruit and vegetables. I glanced without much interest at the fruit. It was dusty, shriveled, and tired looking. There was no way of lifting the securely locked blind. There were lilies or tulips, some kind of flowers anyhow. Pretty, I guess, if you like that sort of thing. Me? I couldn't see the point of buying something that was already half dead. The woman was doing something with a pair of needles that couldn't be described as knitting. She was a cheery old soul, the kind you'd walk across the street to avoid. The last of the summer blooms on the flower stall were a reminder of the coming fall. The last of the summer blooms... I inhaled deeply expecting to experience the scent of the flowers. What I got was traffic fumes. I inhaled deeply. Oh, hi. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. <laughs> I'm very good, and it only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Well, thanks for telling me. 
What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. Alle Blumen bedeuten irgendwas Negatives. <laughs> what about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. Hmm. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. What can you tell me about this material? It's a very expensive piece of cloth, monsieur. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. My oh my, what a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? Ten francs, please, my dear. Ten francs? That's a rip-off. Please yourself. How does this fortune-telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a, a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Okay, gruselig. Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people? I have no problem. But when I try to see what might happen to me, nothing. That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. Mm. Aber ehrlich gesagt ist es auch besser, oder? Wenn du in deine eigene Zukunft sehen könntest und du siehst da irgendwie deinen eigenen Tod, das würde dich, glaube ich, wahnsinnig machen. Also, wenn es sowas geben würde. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me, in the apartment block across the street. I tried the door, but it's locked. You know, I've told the landlord about that a million times. It is the damp. The whole building is like a sponge. It sucks up the moisture from God knows where. You mean the door is stuck because it's swollen? That is correct. There is an art to opening it. Don't shove it hard. Just give it a gentle nudge above the lock. Thanks okay. for the advice. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating, it's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. Yeah, wahrscheinlich harte Schale, weicher Kern. See you later. That's right, Monsieur. You will. Ich glaube, die Nicole ist netter, als man denkt. Remembering the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently, just above the lock. Bonjour. I'm glad you could make it, monsieur. Please, call me George. Fine. I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers beneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. <laughs> the clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. What's more, I know where he hired the clown suit, too. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck! Hard work, I'd call it. What happened? 
I took my photographs to the editor, but he wasn't interested. Can you believe it? He told me to drop the story. But you're not about to do that. Oh no. I am going to find out what's behind these killings. You know what I think? It's a conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arnaud Belota, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it! Millions of housewives literally spitting their butts off. Was he killed for his money? No. He had no living relatives and his fortune went to the orphanage where he'd grown up. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was led to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese green politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. He was committed to dismantling Japan's automobile industry. I can't see him gaining much support with a loony policy like that. Yamada was a man of vision. He was years ahead of his time. If you say so, how did he die? At the end, or should I say, flippers of a giant emperor penguin. A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you what, I won't be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance of a big break. Or a premature death. I found this false nose in the sewer. It has La Risée du Monde printed inside it. The laughing stock of the world. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint-Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. Why don't you put it on, Georges? No way am I wearing this. I'd look really stupid. Besides, you might have had a cold. I found a piece of material near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George, it's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy's wearing! Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his left cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Oh, a crescent moon. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. Do you want this photograph back? No, you keep it. I can always make another print. Tell me more about yourself. Oh, there is not much to tell. Well, how did you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought my first camera. I was eight and my parents had just split up. Did you live with your father? Yes, my mother went off with her new boyfriend. I don't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Ah, I'm sorry. Well, it's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really, always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted I should study art. That's why I went to college. Did you learn about photography at college? Oh, God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used, paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. Do you have a boyfriend? That's none of your business. Stimmt. <laughs>
May I use your telephone? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. <laughs> Hello? Who is this? Mr. Todrick? Oh, it's you again. What now? Did you make a suit for a man with a scar on his face? A scar in the shape of a crescent moon? Maybe. Maybe not. Tell me where I can find him and I'll leave you alone. And if I don't... I won't leave you alone. <laughs> I can't tell you anything unless you give me his name. Do you know where I can find the guy with the scar? I told you. Without a name, I can't help you. Thanks for nothing, Todrick. That's <laughs> so unhoofly. Do you want this photograph back? No. I'm going back out to search for that clown. Where? Well, I guess I could visit the costume shop. Good idea. Kann ich mich hier nicht umschauen? Oh. Larisée de Mont, glaube ich. Ja. It was a disgustingly realistic plastic novelty, like one I'd left on the teacher's desk at school. Boy, that caused so much of a stink you'd have thought it was a real one. Der Poophaufen da. <laughs> As my fingers closed on the plastic novelty, I realized my mistake. It was a novelty, all right, but it wasn't plastic. Mm, okay. Then show ich mich mal um here. It was an antique phonograph, the kind you have to wind by hand. <laughs> the dummy wore a traditional Puro costume. At least, I guess it was a dummy. I gave the dummy Puro a tentative prod, but it didn't move. She reminded me of a girl I dated back in high school. Come to think of it, the dummy had more personality. As I was about to touch the dummy, I realized it had the same color eyes as Nico. The strange thing was, I hadn't realized I'd noticed the color of Nico's eyes. Oh, da hat sich wohl jemand verliebt. The guy's spoon-shaped face was mournful and humorless. He looked like a vegetarian in a slaughterhouse. <laughs> Sehr spezifisch. Excuse me. Bonjour, monsieur. Please, come in. Welcome. Leave the mundane world behind. But in these four walls, Fantasy is king. Uh, I don't want a costume. Didn't you ever dress up when you were a child? Not that I remember. Incredible! You'll be telling me next that you never shared your elder sister's lingerie. I don't have a sister, and I think I'd look pretty silly in a brassiere. I just need some information. Of course. How can I help you? Have you heard of a man named Plantile? I do not recall any one of that name. I'm looking for a man who hired a clown costume from you. Oui, monsieur. I do not see how I can help. Don't you keep a record of costumes that you've rented out? Of course, monsieur, but... Uh... Well, then, I'd like to check your records. Give me the names of everyone who's rented a clown suit. Impossible. There are too many. 
The clown I'm looking for is a cold-blooded killer. Give me his name, and I'll see he's brought to justice. I'd help you if I could, but you can't expect me to remember all my customers. You see, the clown costume is our most popular line, monsieur. On average, we hire out more than 30 clown suits a week. You'll have to give me more to go by. A description, perhaps? Do you recognize this man? Ah oui, he was here this morning. How come clowns are so popular? I think it has something to do with their unpredictable nature. Personally, I think clowns should be banned, along with mimes. <laughs> oh, come now. Who doesn't love clowns? Me, for one. Ich habe nichts gegen Clowns. Ja klar, wenn man sich Horrorfilme anguckt mit Clowns, dann ist ja klar, dass die dann gruselig sind. <lacht> Are you sure this is the man who bought grease paint? Oui, monsieur. Are you sure this is the man who bought grease paint? Oui, monsieur. Do you want this red nose back? Not after it's been worn, thank you. Do you want this red nose back? Not Does this dirty tissue mean anything to you? Hmm. Let me smell that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Best Imers number seven, white pancake. Theatrical grease paint, right? Oh, oui, monsieur. La crème de la crème of Cespion accoutrement. Have you sold any of it recently? Yes, two can. About this tissue. I have already given you my... Are you sure this is the man who bought grease paint? Oui, monsieur. He chose two costumes. Bozo the clown and Seamus the pixie. A pixie? Very smart. Green silk with a taffeta lining. He gave me his name as Monsieur Khan. Are you sure this is the same? Certainement, Monsieur Khan. Okay, vielen, vielen Dank. Thanks for your help, buddy. My pleasure, Monsieur. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Huh? Uh, well, okay. Hmm. Ah. Um. <laughs> What are you trying to do, kill me? You did not find it amusing? I never saw the funny side of electroshock therapy. Eh bien, it is yours to keep. A gift? Do I need a license? No, but I give you a word of warning, monsieur. What? Remember to switch it off before you visit the toilet. <laughs> okay, vielen Dank. Tschüss. Jetzt habe ich den Namen. Dann kann ich zu Nicole das Telefon benutzen und den Namen angeben. Denke ich mal. Hoffe ich mal. Bonjour. Madame. Salut, Josh. What news? I've been to the costume shop. Yeah, I like it. What are you supposed to be? I didn't hire a costume. <laughs> These are my clothes and you know it. Did you ask about the clown? Yeah. He used the name Khan. He hired two costumes, the clown and a pixie. Then we're one jump ahead of him. How do you make that out? He probably plans to use the pixie suit next time he kills. Oh God, don't let it be me. I don't deserve to die at the hands of a pixie. Don't be silly, Georges. That won't happen. Oh no? No. Because every time you see a pixie, you're going to run like hell. What are you doing to help trace the killer clown? Research, George. Yeah? You have a copy of the clown's yearbook? I have a telephone and lots of contacts. Oh. Well, did you find anything useful? Not yet. I'm employing my first and most useful weapon. What's that? Patience. Oh, I've heard of that. 
Isn't it a substitute for decisive thinking? Have you found out any more about the murders? Well, it may be nothing, but both the clan's victims visited Paris earlier this year. When? The second week of July. They were both here at the same time. Did they meet? I don't know, but I can't imagine it was coincidence. Hmm. Do you want this photograph back? No. May I use your telephone? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. So, ich hoffe, er wird uns jetzt ein bisschen was sagen. Hello? Who is this? It's George Stobart again. What now? I found out the name of the guy I'm looking for. Is that so? Yeah, it's Khan. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? Yes, I delivered the suit to his hotel. The Hotel Ubu. Uh, I uh, don't remember the room number. It was upstairs. The second room on the right-hand side of the corridor. Thanks, Todrick. That's all I wanted to know. Now I've got you, Mr. Clown. Now we're getting somewhere. Do you know the Hotel Ubu? The Ubu? Yes, I do. That's where the clown stayed. Good work, George. See you later. Where are you going now? I could go hang out at the Hotel Ubu. Watch out for Khan, George. Don't worry, I will. Oh. Mm. Auf Wiedersehen! Hm. Deutschland! The guy looked just like a weasel. The man looked like an amiable Bigfoot. The sign listed the price of rooms, and boy were they expensive. The killer must have been earning a fat wad to pay for accommodation like this. The lobby was quiet, almost deserted. Erstmal umgucken hier. Hm, hier ist gar nichts. Oh, ich bin zu doof und sehe nichts. Mit wem spreche ich denn? Ich glaube, der Dünnere ist das Gehirn. Und er ist Schmackes. Excuse me. <lacht> yes. Have you heard of a guy called Plantar? No. That name means nothing to me. Do you know a man by the name of Khan? No, I don't. It's very important I get to see him, and... I told you. I don't know it. Forget it. I think that was not so a smart idea to say that I find him. Well, good. It was a magnificent old Steinway piano. The woman was obviously English. She had all the qualities of Bodicea, Elizabeth I, and Margaret Thatcher rolled into one. It wasn't a pretty sight. Hey, nicht so frech hier. The figure of a sexless youth was frozen in mid-skip with a silly grin on its stone lips. I recognized the guy. It was the Nobel Prize winner from the country whose name I couldn't pronounce. In the ornate booth was the most elegant public telephone I'd ever seen.
The clerk wore a disdainful expression like he'd been born with it. It was the register of guests staying at the hotel. Hanging from a brass hook was a key and a plastic tag. I want some information. Who are you? The police? I'm conducting a private investigation. Ah, I know only too well what you mean. That is one of the drawbacks of the catering business. When people book into an hotel, they leave their morals at home, no? Do you know a man named Plantau? No, monsieur. Do you have a guest by the name of Khan? No, monsieur. Perhaps you would care to check the register. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Yes, monsieur. That man is one of our guests. What name? <laughs> I cannot tell you that. Can you tell me which room the man in the photograph has taken? Oh, no, monsieur. That information is confidential. Would it make a difference if I told you the guy in the photo was a murderer? We are accustomed to catering for celebrities, monsieur. Movie stars, mm. politicians, royalty, sporting personalities, they all stay here. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Did I show you this photograph? Yes. The man who calls himself Khan has a scar on his left cheek. Vraiment? I tell you. I do not know a man named Khan. Maybe not, but I'd noticed a change in his expression when I mentioned the scar. About the key hanging on the hook over there. Oui, monsieur. Which room is it for? Number 21. Is that room taken? No. The guests checked out this morning. I'd like to check into room 21. That is not possible. How come? You said it was vacant. It is reserved for another guest. Rats. No, monsieur. Dutch. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your help, buddy. Dann spreche ich mal mit den Gästen. Excuse me. Didn't I see your picture in the news? You're that Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. Yes, that is me, in person. I don't want to worry you, but have you had any threats on your life? You know, mysterious phone calls, letters made up of headlines cut from the newspaper. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know a guy called Plantau? I don't know anybody in Paris. Oh. Well, this guy's dead anyhow. Why do you ask me about dead men? I have seen enough of death to last me a lifetime. I'm, uh, sure you have. Have you seen a clown? I beg your pardon? The clown. <laughs> a guy in funny pants. Have you seen him? My pants are from England. Marx and Spencer. They are a pleasure and a comfort to wear with much support. I'm real glad to hear that. <laughs> you know, it's good to know you Nobel Prize winners are human too. In my country, the people make do with string and egg cartoons. For pants? For everything. Oppression is the mother of ingenuity. Do you recognize this man? He calls himself Khan. Yes, I know this man. Why do you carry his photograph? I'm a private detective. Das ist nicht gut, den Leuten das alles zu sagen. What's your interest in Khan? He is an enemy of my people. You know he's a killer? Of course, amongst other things. Would you help me investigate Khan? That is not possible. My instructions are to observe. I cannot jeopardize my position as an honored guest of this country's government. Mm -hmm. This is a photo of Khan, right? That is just one of the names by which he is known. 
This is a photo of K that is Okay, thank you. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. I recognized the guy. It was the Nobel I figured the lady at the keys wouldn't appreciate a duet with a musical illiterate like me. <laughs> Hi there, ma'am. Well, hello. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a man. You disappoint me, my dear. For one foolish moment, I thought. But never mind. Aren't you going to tell me your name? Uh, George. George Stobart, ma'am. How sweet! I once had a stable boy called George. I am Lady Piermont. The common reaction is to kneel and stutter, but it's not obligatory. A real lady? I mean, you're an honest-to-god aristocrat? Oh, I don't know about that. Few of my ancestors are honest, not even to God. I can trace my family back to the Normans, but don't let that intimidate you, George. Beneath that impressive pedigree, I'm just flesh and blood. Okay. <laughs> the blood may be blue, but the flesh is the plump beef of old England, so to speak. You appear distracted, George. Is there any way I can help you? Are you here in Paris on vacation? No, darling, I'm on holiday. I needed to get away after Algie's funeral. I didn't realize you were mourning the loss of a loved one. I'm not. He was my husband. <laughs> <They're classic. laughs> I'm sorry to hear about your husband's death. You wouldn't be if you knew him, my dear. It gave me the opportunity to take a well-deserved holiday. Daphne suggested a change of scenery. Paris, she said. A wild romance is just what you need to take your mind off the inquest. Well, the closest I came to romance was being wooed by a drunken Breton chef. I must say I was disappointed with his cocko van. Not at all what I was expecting. I was thinking of cutting my holiday short, packing my bags and heading back to Hemel Hempstead. That was until last night. What happened to you last night? I was stricken, Mr. Stobart. Cupid's arrow has cleft my bosom. I couldn't really miss. It was just as I'd always imagined it should be. The intimacy of candlelight, romantic music tinkling across the room, and then a stranger's glance. Those brooding eyes, that suave manner, those tight trousers. Mm -mm. He was the man I'd been waiting for all my life. I'm glad he finally turned up after all these years. Ah, but it wasn't to be. He was merely toying with my affections. And if I ever catch up with him, he's dead. Oh. Who was the guy who led you on? His name is Merlin. Did you know there's a gangster out front? What makes you think he's a gangster? The Italian suit and the bulge in his pocket? I know plenty of men with Italian suits and bulges in their pockets. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily make them gangsters. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? My God, it's him! That's Merlin! She represented everything I loved about the English. The lady was totally deranged. Merlin? You mean King Arthur's wizard? Good heavens, no! Monsieur Merlin is a fellow guest. He's the man I've been telling you about. That's the man who spurned me. The man you know as Merlin is a fake. What do you mean, sweetie? He's a murderer. He also uses the name Khan. I am shocked, Mr. Stobart. Shaken. I took him to be a gentleman. A man of honor. Do you know, I'd rather like to assist you in stitching him up. When did you last see Merlin? It was no more than an hour ago. He came downstairs and spoke to that clerk chappy. Something passed hands. I couldn't see what exactly. A briefcase? No, smaller than that. A bundle of papers, perhaps. The clerk put it in the hotel safe and Merlin went out. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you saw Merlin putting documents in the safe? 
Yes, darling, positive. I wonder what they were. Obviously something of great importance. Yeah, I'd sure like to get my hands on whatever it is. I'll bet they had something to do with Plantow's briefcase. Has Merlin returned to the hotel? No, he hasn't. Are you going to search his room? If I could get in there, I would. Would you distract the clerk while I borrow a key? Are you asking me to aid you in a criminal act, darling? Um... Oh no! It's the key to an empty room! And why, may I ask, do you wish to gain access to an empty room? Do you plan to squat? No, ma'am. Scouts honor? I was never in the Boy Scouts, ma'am. Oh, you should have been. What were your parents thinking of? It's a fine way for a boy to get licked into shape. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, <laughs> why do you want to get into that room? I'm hoping it's the key to Merlin's room. Well, how can I refuse? I shouldn't think my feminine charms would be much use in this case. But a good dose of English arrogance might do the trick. Mm -hmm. Hat sie einen Sari an? I say, you there, flunky. We, oui, madame. Listen carefully. You do understand English, don't you? But of course, madame. Good. I wish to deposit some jewelry for safekeeping. I understand. Are you quite certain? Oh, bien sûr, madame. Over to you, my dear. There was no one registered under the name of Khan, but the name in the book for room 22 was Merlin. Can I nochmal Danke sagen or so? Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? I got the key. Thanks for your help, ma'am. I have to go, ma'am. Oh, yes. That sieht so schön aus. Das ist so schön gezeichnet. Oh. Okay. It was a key ring bearing one large brass key and a tag which read Hotel Ubu. Mm -hmm. The sign on the door read 21. The sign on the door read 22. If the tailor's description was correct, this was the killer's room. Room number 23. The door was locked. The door was locked. I have forgotten which number I have. Oh, oh. It was a key ring bearing one large brass key and a tag which read Hotel Ubu. Uh, maybe it wasn't the right room, but this was the right key. It was a massive mahogany wardrobe. There was nothing in the wardrobe apart from a vague lingering smell of camphor. Mm. The window looked out over a narrow alley surrounded by high walls. I think I'll just read it quickly. Uh, 
Falls ich da irgendwie runterfalle oder so. The cabinet had no drawers, just a single door. The assassin had been too smart to leave incriminating evidence beside his bed. The closet was a solid, impressive piece of antique furniture. The pants were newly laundered and pressed with immaculate creases. There was nothing in the pockets of the pants. The pants were... There was nothing... The bed was several times larger than the narrow cot I'd been given at the place I was staying. Yeah, ja, sehr gigantisch. The bed was freshly made, and the crisp white sheets told me nothing about the killer's habits. The bed was several... It was the battered leather briefcase I'd seen Plantar carrying just before he died. I searched the interior of the briefcase, but as I'd half expected, it was empty. The bed was freshly made. Ah, nine. The bed was... Kann doch nicht irgendwie unter dem Bett gucken? The closet was a solid... Im There was nothing in the pockets of the pants. The interior of the closet... Ich bin verwirrt. The bed was fresh. I searched the interior. Ja, ich würde sagen, wie es weitergeht, das seht ihr aber erst in der nächsten Folge. Ich bedanke mich fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss.